Tony, I'm one of those types who likes to keep things simple, but I've been hearing a lot about trusts. Is a trust something I need, or are there more simple things I should be concerned with with my beneficiaries so they can easily take over my assets when I die? Well, it's a very good question. And while everyone's situation is different, for sure, here are the main documents that I feel every saver should consider. Again, this is consider. We're not attorneys here. But what I've seen over the years are the best documents to consider putting in place so that things will be handled very easily and very quickly upon one's death. The first thing is a simple will, something we call a sweetheart will. And the sweetheart will basically says, in my case, I'm married. Everything goes to my wife, Susan. She's my sweetheart. Everything goes to me. If she dies first and when we both pass away, everything goes to our three kids. Now, interesting, you could set up within the sweetheart will a living trust, one that could be set up during your lifetime or becomes what's called testamentary and is established at your death. Let me explain. So like right now, I have several grandchildren. I would like to set up a fund that would be established upon my death that would cover all of their educational expenses, both as youngsters with private school or going into college. Well, it's not going to take effect now. It takes effect when I die, whereas a living trust is where I would take assets and actually transfer them to the trust now, mainly to avoid issues with dealing with probate. Now, again, in most cases, living trusts do not actually save anything on taxes. They're there for privacy purposes and to avoid probate. The next type of trust, and we're seeing this more and more, these are called irrevocable trusts. We used these back in the 80s when I used to do estate planning, back when you could only pass $600,000 without falling into estate taxes. But now we're using these more and more where attorneys are putting uh, assets into what's called an irrevocable trust, meaning once the asset goes in there, you cannot change the, the status of the trust. Now, why are people doing this? Well, if you live more than five years from the date of transfer into such a trust, there's a good possibility that nursing homes won't take the asset away from you should you go in a nursing home. Another type of a document is called a durable power of attorney, which will allow another trusted person, usually a family member, to act on your financial behalf when you are unable to do so. Now, be very careful as to who you appoint as the person granted to have this power. In fact, you might even wish to have two different individuals who are there to make financial decisions just in case somebody kind of goes off the rails with this stuff. It's very, very important that you have people you can trust and you might want to have more than one person that's acting as your durable power of attorney. Next, if you have a 401k, IRA, annuity, or life insurance, remember to keep those beneficiaries up to date even if you change the will. In fact, years ago when I used to study under well-known CPA Ed Slott, he told of a story of a gentleman who had a million-dollar IRA was married at the time and had his present wife as the beneficiary, but went through a divorce. Now, little did he know when he remarried and changed his will that the IRA was not changed. In other words, the beneficiary was still his ex-wife. Well, when he died, guess who got the money? That's right, the ex-wife, because the beneficiary of the IRA trumped the will. So be sure you keep those beneficiaries up to date. It's very, very important to do that. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed that video. If you'd like, check out these other clips and be sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button for more videos.